Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you today about funding for truck driving school. And this is mostly for truck drivers, but it's also for bus drivers. If you want to get a license to drive a, a school bus or be a coach captain driving for Greyhound and those types of things, we'll show you where to get money to go to truck driving school and earn your CDL license. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. And there we go. And that didn't work. <laughs> Not sure what I didn't didn't try here or get going, but something didn't work. So anyway, we're back. We're talking about getting money to go to truck driving school to get your bus or truck uh, truck driving license, your CDL license. Uh, Corey's here, Bricks for Wheels. Corey is the moderator, keeps the bad people out and gets the videos uh, that I suggest for people. And Tim is here. Margaret is here. Hello, Margaret's turning in from Brooklyn. And Tim is here uh, tuning in from Winnipeg, Manitoba, commonly referred to as Winterpeg. Because <laughs> it's very cold there. Very, very cold. Uh, and yeah, not sure what's with the accent. But anyway, uh, so tonight we're talking about where to get money. There is money for truck driving school, despite what you might think, what you might have heard. Uh, we're going to try and convince you that going to truck driving school, getting your CDL license is in fact a good option for you. Also, you know, getting your driving instructor's license, which Margaret is thinking about after she gets her license and gets a bit of experience. Uh, she can do that and teach people how to drive. Uh, there's always work doing that. Uh, so we talk about that. Uh, Matthew, my friend, is tuning in from Cornell. And so... Uh, one of the things I want to re to say <laughs> is that even though the topic is CDL stuff, uh, I spend 10 or 12 minutes on the presentation, maybe 15 at the at the most, and then after the uh, presentation, we open up to questions and answers, and I'll answer any questions you have about driving, uh, whether that's getting your first license, whether that's a CDL license. Uh, whether that is, uh, you know, just wanting to be a better driver, smarter, safer driver, and drive defensively. So the question and answer period isn't just related to the topic that I'm talking about for the evening, but it's anything to do with driving. We can help you with that. So Tyson, I have to get my DZ for the fire department. Yes, excellent. Uh, Tim, you're from Marion, Indiana. Excellent. The Hoosier State. Uh, Arun, uh, missed your last class, how to get CDL license anyway. Uh, happy to see you. Uh, Arun, that is here on the channel. You can watch that on the replay. So essentially what we do is we go uh, to the slideshow. I'm just getting to the slideshow presentation here. Uh, making sure my tech works because <laughs> it didn't work for the intro. Uh, and then answer questions. So uh, the other thing is stick around. <laughs> I had a mishap on uh, Monday night when I was driving to Victoria. I had to go down to Victoria and look after my rental suite. Uh, my rental suite's in Sydney, BC, but it is on Vancouver Island. Uh, and yes, uh, we had something happen. That uh, So I'll show you the video because I got it on dash cam. So uh, Tim, my friend Tim from DriveSmart BC, uh, if you have any questions about driving in British Columbia, legislation, laws, and rules governing driving here in the province, uh, have a look at Tim's uh, website there, DriveSmart BC. And Tim sent me a complicated question this afternoon, which kind of hurt my head about U-turns and lane markings. And of course, the legislation, the driving manuals, none of that uh, is gives you a clear answer to what you're looking for. So, uh, Arun, my voice is low. Uh, it seems to be working here on my end. Is um, One of the other things I might get you to do is just restart your browser. That might work for you. Uh, is everybody else, can everybody else hear me all right? Uh, Claudia here, uh, CDL drivers greeting from Baltimore, excellent, and Rocky's here from Windsor. All right, so uh, everybody else, is the volume okay? I'll just turn this up a little bit. Tim, you are most welcome, my friend. All right, so I'm going to get over to the PowerPoint presentation. I'll go through the slide. As I said, it'll take about 10 or 12 minutes. Uh, Corey said that it's good on his end. So, okay, so we're just going to leave it there then. Uh, so, Arun, I might suggest you just uh, restart your browser, you, you know, Word or whatnot. Okay, so everybody says it sounds good. All right, excellent. So, going to truck driving school, getting a bus license, and this is, you know, any bus, if you want to work for a church or you want to work for a school, those types of things have 
you know, pay attention to this because you could get funding for this, all right? For those of you new to the Smart Drive Test channel, uh, I was a truck driver in the 1990s, uh, licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997, so I hate to say that I've been doing this for quite a couple of decades now. <laughs> and uh, graduated from the University of Melbourne in Australia in 2006 with my doctorate in legal history. And I looked at the transition between horse-drawn traffic and motor traffic and the impact it had on policing and law in kind of the first part of the 21st century. So graduated there and while I was going to university, I drove buses for Greyhound and one of the regional bus lines there. So I have uh, bus experience as well. So if you want more information, you can go over to the Smart Drive Test website. Just scroll down on the front page there and you'll see my autobiography and you can get more information about me and also see the video, uh, Mr. Wheeler, Mr. Walker, Motor Mania with Disney, which is the epitome of driving in the 1950s and still is today. And it's a great video. So have a look at that as well. New video this week, fixing a flat tire. We short to the point, quick <laughs> video on how to fix a flat tire. So have a look at that. And as also for tonight's uh, information that we're talking about, getting funding, finding a job, because that's what we want to do after we get our CDL license and go to truck driving school, we want to get a job, go over to Smart Drive Test uh, backslash employment. And there's lots of great information there about writing a resume cover letter, finding a job, doing job search and all those things. And that will help you out. So have a look at that as well. All right. So costs of going to truck driving school. It's not just the tuition, which, you know, if you look at some of the mandatory entry level training programs now that are in place in Ontario and Manitoba and uh, Alberta, and unfortunately it's going to come to the States here. It, it's just an eventuality that this is going to happen. Uh, some of these tuition programs can be, or the tuition costs for truck driving school can be $5,000 to $10,000. They're very expensive. And then the other thing that you got to price out when you're researching truck driving schools is all the add-ons for a logbook course, for an air brake course, for uh, tanker endorsements, skid school, uh, passenger vehicle endorsements because you want to try and get as many pieces of paper as you can when you leave truck driving school because you're going to be more employable when you start looking for a job. What kind of equipment are you going to be working on and what are your living expenses because you're going to be going to school for eight to ten weeks. How are you going to live? How are you going to pay for your rent, your mortgage, paying for food and living and transportation and those types of things because life continues to go on. So you have to pay for all of that. So you have to figure out up front, what is the total cost of going to truck driving school? How am I gonna fund this? How am I gonna get the money to pay for all of this while I'm going there? So time, money and energy because it's a lot of money, it's a lot of time and it's a lot of energy to go to truck driving school because it's, it's, it's not just you know, sitting in a classroom and learning, you also have to physically learn how to drive these big trucks, drive these buses, get them around safely, and you have to prepare for a government administered driver's test, but administered by the DMV or other authorities here in Canada. Okay? So, and you know, there's always the question, is it going to work out? You've always got this little niggly voice in the back of your head, well, what if it doesn't work out? What if I don't like it? What if I don't want to do it, right? So you got to figure out the confidence. You got to mitigate the risks. You got to do as much research as you can. You got to talk to as many people as you can. You got to talk to me, talk to other people. Cause I can remember when I got my CDL license and I wanted to go to work and you know, I couldn't figure out how to get the money to go to truck driving school. I tried to borrow it from somebody. Uh, they wouldn't lend me the money. So, you know, in the end, I ended, there was a way around it. I went and rented a truck through the company that I was working for. I did have a D license at the time. And then I upgraded to my tractor trailer license. So there are ways to mitigate the risk, but try to get as much information as you can. And I mean, when I got my CDL license, of course, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have all these truck driving forums and those types of things. So, you know, you have access to great amount of information and you can, you know, talk to me, send me an email, leave me a comment in the comment section and I'll do what I can to help you out. So one of the questions, and this is a tougher question that's going to, you know, reveal itself as you go through truck driving school, but you got to figure this out up front. You know, are you being taught to work in the trucking industry? Are they giving you the real information that you need to go get a job and work in the truck driving industry? Because unfortunately, a lot of drivers or a lot of driving instructors are not teaching students 
how to work in the industry. They're just teaching them how to pass the test. And when they get out there, then they start working in the industry and oh my God, there's so much for them to learn outside of what they're doing. So, you know, are you being prepared to, to work in the industry? And, you know, I would like to think that the MELT programs, these mandatory entry level training programs are doing that, but unfortunately they're not. Uh, there's just too much classroom time Whereas drivers learning how to drive a truck need to be in the seat more. They need to be more on the job training. There need to be more mentor programs for these people. Okay. How is the content being delivered? And again, this comes back to the longer programs where how much time are you spending in the classroom? How much time are you spending in the yard? Because if you're spending two thirds of your curriculum in the yard, you're not learning how to drive truck. Okay. And the, the last thing you need to figure out, and this is a personal thing, what kind of a learner are you? Are you a visual learner? Are you an audible learner? Like, can you listen to it, hear somebody talk or listen to the engine and know what the revs are and those types of things? Have somebody explain it to you and then figure it out on your own. Or are you a hands-on person? Do you actually have to be doing physically touching, moving, you know, seeing, talking about it? What kind of a learner are you? And figure out how you learn best. Do you learn best by sitting in a classroom and watching videos or listening to the instructor show you how to do it? one-on-one -on -one demonstration, those types of things, working in groups or whatnot. So you need to figure that out as well. All right, so there's five components of truck driving school and I'll get more into the details of the funding here in just a moment. So if you're learning how to drive a truck or a bus, it's basically turning. So getting the vehicle around the units and those types of things uh, are learning how to maneuver a large vehicle around cities. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, the second one is shifting. If it is um, a manual transmission, you're gonna have to learn how to shift. And then the third one is the pre-trip inspection. No matter what commercial vehicle that you're driving, there's going to be a pre-trip inspection from small buses to larger buses, to straight trucks like dump trucks and vans and those types of things. And then all the way up to tractor trailers and whatnot. So uh, those are the components. And then coupling the trailer, if you're doing tractor trailer and then backing up and you're gonna have to back up safely, okay? And we can talk more about those components and I'll probably talk about that next week exactly what you're gonna do, what the curriculum is gonna be for truck driving school and whatnot, okay? So as soon as you start truck driving school, you decide that you're gonna do that, you've got the money, start looking for a job. I mean, you could even do some informational interviews where you call up truck driving companies and say, you know, I'm looking for a job, I'm looking to go into truck driving school, can you give me some information? Can you make some recommendations about where I might go and who I might talk to about this? Okay, so changing careers, uh, it's daunting and filled with uncertainty, but you know, have a look at Bill Walker's story. And again, this is over on the Smart Drive Test website underneath the backslash employment, and you can find that information and, and Bill's story there. And we can talk more about Bill in the question and answer period if you'd like. So the first way to get funding is to get sponsored by a company and there are uh, larger trucking companies in the states that will do this where they will pay to send you to truck driving school. In the end, it's a one or two year contract that you actually have to work for them and to pay the money back for the tuition. The question in that instance is what if you don't like it? Okay, what if you don't like trucking? What if you don't like the job that you're working for? Well, you're kind of stuck because you have to you have to honor that contract or you have to pay them back a cash value. Uh, sometimes it's just best just to stay there and, and do what you need to do, but that's the only con of this. The only downfall that I see of this is in case you don't like the job, but they are gonna send you to truck driving school and they are gonna guarantee you a job at the end when you're done. So this is, this is a pretty good uh, deal if you, can, if you can tie into one of those. Uh, there's tons of government funding there has to be government funding, especially now with Ontario's truck driving schools charging tuition of up and upwards of $10,000 and then living expenses on top of that, which are probably going to be another $5,000. So you're looking at $15,000 for six to 10 weeks to go to truck driving school. And I talked to one truck driving school in Ontario and they said that one of the limiting factors is actually getting driver's tests, especially now in the time of COVID. Uh, you know, you're going to be looking at 10, 12, maybe even uh, 20 weeks before you can get a driver's test and that's really gonna be lim your limiting factor. So there's employment, retraining, veterans programs, vocational funding. Uh, when I was teaching truck driving and working at the truck driving school, they were allowed up to $7,500 for truck driver training uh, by the government here in the province of British Columbia. And in the States, they also have all kinds of programs and whatnot. So make sure that you investigate that. Uh, just go on to Google and just go truck driver uh, training funding and just go through and see what you can find for your state or province or wherever you might be living. 
okay? So the other way that you can do it is a savings plan. You could work to save the money, uh, work part-time while you're going to school. That's not ideal, but it is an option that you could do. Uh, you know, beg, borrow, and steal anything that you need to get through school. Do what you need to do to find the money. And as I said, when I went to truck driving school, I didn't, or I didn't go to truck driving school. I rented a, a truck and then I, you know, got other people to help me, which is very risky because unfortunately, you know, passing a, a class A or class one truck driving license test now is, is there's a lot of pieces to it that you have to know and just to specifically pass the driver's test. And I've been out with a few people where they did that, where they went out with another person and whatnot who was working at the company that they were working at and they got me to come in and do an assessment. And I sat in the truck with them and they're like, you, you know, you're just not ready. There's just, you know, I would suggest that you do four or five hours at a truck driving school and pay them that money. Uh, that's one way, one thing that you can do as well, okay? So the other way that you can raise money, you know, sell your stuff. If you got a couple of cars around and you wanna go to truck driving school, sell your cars, right? Sell, you know, get your family to help you out. Go to thrift shops, <laughs> you know. I had a friend who was making a pretty good living going to thrift shops, uh, finding quality brand jeans, and then uh, she would buy them from the thrift shop at a couple of dollars a pair of jeans, and she would take them to a consignment shop put them on consignment, and she was making an extra three or $400 a month doing that. Uh, now, you gotta know what you're looking for and what you're doing and those types of things, but that's one of the ways that you can get help. Uh, you can get help from other truck drivers. There's a lot of us who will pay it forward, help you out, get money, and those types of things. So, you know, if, if this is really your goal, you need to get people you trust on board to really, really help you out as much as you can. So. People will, people want to see you succeed. So tell people that this is what you want to do and they will help you out. Okay. Just tell as many people as you can. And the naysayers and the negative people, you know, just ignore them. Go, you know, don't spend time with them. Uh, kind of last resort. And this is really, I say this with, you know, a bit of reservation is, is that you can finance going to truck driving school. You could get a loan. You could put it on credit cards. You could get a second mortgage on your house and those types of things. And all of this has been, propo been proposed previously. But don't do this unless it's last resort. Unless you've exhausted all of the other avenues of getting funding to go to truck driving school and getting your truck or bus license. Don't do this, okay? Because there's, there's so much money out there. There is money. There's a way of doing it. There's a way of getting it. So exhaust all of those other things before you entertain, you know, taking out a loan to take to send yourself to truck driving school. So good luck on your driver's test. Good luck on going to truck driving school. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. So we'll get back over here. There we go. Okay. So Tim says I paid about $12,000 when I went back to school full time in 05 for two years. Uh, that got me nine more years of employment and a small pension. Uh, good training is a worthwhile investment in yourself. And y you're absolutely right, Tim that you know, you're know you investing money in yourself and there's no better investment to you know put money into yourself, put money into your training, put money into uh, you know getting better education and whatnot. And going to truck driving school, the return on investment is 95% guaranteed because there's gonna be about 5% of the people that actually go to truck driving school who aren't going to like it right i've had i've seen a few people in my years in the industry that they come out of truck driving school they get in the truck they go out you know and mind you it was a long haul flat deck company which is a fair bit of work and you're living on the road and those types of things but so there is that risk that at the end of it you're not going to like it but it, but now as i said there's so much information on the internet there's so much information around with other people and you can connect with other people and talk to them and you can really make a decision about whether this is what you want to do or something and the other thing is, even if you spend $10,000 and the time and energy to get your CDL license, you do it for a year, and then after a year, you're like, ah, I don't want to do this anymore, and you go do something else. It's not money wasted, that's for sure. Uh, and, you know, and the other thing is, you're going to make good money. Even as a, a novice driver driving truck, you're still going to make forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 for the year. So, you know, if uh, I had one gentleman who came into the truck driving school. He didn't come in for his truck driver license, but he came in for his bus license because he wanted to work for transit. And that's what he did. He got a job with transit. And, you know, previous to that, he was working at Walmart. And it was a huge step up for him in terms of employment, working, you know, 
a union job, good wages, uh, working for the transit authority and whatnot. So it was better than working at Walmart. So it was definitely a step up for him in terms of it, not only his work hours, but also the pay that he was getting. So if you're thinking about it and it doesn't really work out for you, you know, you decide after a year that it's not going to, it's not what you want to do. It's still not a, a waste of time. Uh, Margaret, maybe they can set up a GoFundMe online donation uh, site to fund truck schools. Uh, yeah, Margaret, that's definitely something else you can uh, definitely do. Uh, I, I recently just learned about this uh, GoFundMe website. So, you know, there's people out there that are willing to donate money and willing to help you out to, you know, build yourself up and those types of things. Uh, you know, I'm still, I'm certainly willing to help people out and pay it forward and give people money and, and give them a hand and whatnot. So, okay. Uh, Angel, uh, Winnipeg, but I'm Vancouver waiting for my delivery and heading back to Winnipeg. So driving truck, there you go. Uh, stay safe out there on the roads. How are the roads anyway? <laughs> yeah, we got a road story for you. Just hang on for that. Uh, Paducah. Thanks, Rick. I always watching your videos. More info about driving keeps me safe. Awesome. Yolanda. Nice to see you, Rick. I always watch your videos. They did my driving test and failed the backup. Okay, but you're going to give it another go. Excellent. Okay, all good. So, uh, here we go. Just get over to this here. <laughs> so, uh, the audio on this is uh, James Dobson. Bringing Up Girls. Some of you may have heard of this audiobook. Anyway, I hadn't heard of James Dobson before. James Dobson is a uh, right-wing Christian, Christian traditionalist. That's the word I'm looking for. Anyway, I just picked the book up in the library when I was driving down to Vancouver on the, on the weekend. And so I was going down to deal with the oil tank. This is the furnace. The furnace has had to be replaced just before Christmas. We had to go down and take the oil tank out. And so I went to the, the book, or went to the library, got my audio books as I normally do because it's a five, six hour drive. The guy that's coming down to buy the oil calls me on Monday and says, uh, there's wind warning in effect. The ferries are probably gonna be canceled tomorrow and you won't get over. So my initial plan was to leave Tuesday morning at five o'clock in the morning, drive down, get the noon ferry and be across for two o'clock. Well, that didn't work out. <laughs> Which was good good on my part anyway. I left Monday night uh, around 8, 8.30 p.m. And I'm driving on the road, Highway 97C here between Vernon and Kamloops. And for those of you who don't know that, uh, it's not too bad. But there is a section north of Westwold between, just between there and Monte Creek Hill where it's all windy and up and down. And uh, yeah, so I'm boogieing up there and I suspected it was a little icy. <laughs> I suspected it was a little icy. So anyway, this is what happened when I went into a curve. So just here we go. Let's extend our journey further now into the wonderful and complex world of worlds. Every one of them is beautiful, precious and unique. Come on! I wish I had about a dozen granddaughters like the little ladies whose pictures grace the cover design of this book. By the way, wouldn't you like to know what secret is being shared between the And for little girls, where little girls get bigger every day. Thank heaven for little girls. They grow up in the most delightful way. <laughs> so yes, we, uh, we spun out on the road. It was sheer ice. Uh, that car didn't even catch. Uh, as I was going down the road sideways trying to get a hold of it. And as I've said in winter driving before, when the vehicle starts to spin, when the vehicle st starts to skid, get off the throttle, get off the brake, uh, because the brake was what got me into trouble in the first place because I went into that corner and I just touched the brakes and as soon as I touched the brakes, the back end lifted up and that's what caused it to break loose. And But it was sheer ice. It was <laughs> icy. Uh, but you know, it didn't really phase me too much. Uh, you know, I just kind of clicked the dash cam and uh, <laughs> yes, Tim, the, the ride was softer after that. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, Margaret. Yep. That was the manual transmission car and, uh, yep. Touched the brakes back end, lifted up. It broke loose, went sideways 
And, uh, you know, you know that saying, never drive faster than your guardian angels can fly because there were no other cars around. Had to have been other cars around because I was right out in the other lane. And so, yeah, so we spun out. <laughs> but again, you know, I'm kind of thinking in the middle of this and you can hear me yell there at one point, come on, stupid car, wouldn't, wouldn't come back online. But anyway, uh, we're all good. Kind of just like backed into the snowbank and then I just drove off. And the rest of the drive was good, but that one section there just north of Westwold is really, really, really icy. Adrian, I've always been interested in trucking and I'm hoping to get into truck driving school within the month. That's awesome. So Adrian, uh, you are you looking for financing and those types of things? Has that worked out for you? Uh, Janet, can happen so fast. Yeah, that's the understatement, Janet, because I just come into that corner. And you know, the other thing that kind of duped me was is that there was a car in front of me you know, about a kilometer in front of me. And that car was, you know, doing all right. And I was doing all right. And then I just came into that corner. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, we, we spun out. So uh, Tim, it's better to be driving slow and wish you were driving fast than to be driving fast and wish you were driving slow. Ah, eh, not always. <laughs> not always. Okay, Angel, as our new corners in Canada being truck drivers in their countries forced to go through school, or can they go with a company that trains them for the exams? Uh, newcomers, okay, newcomers in Canada. Uh, j just because, uh, Angel, we do have a few com uh, companies here in Canada that will pay for training, but they're, you know, they're just few and far between. We just don't have the large, the really large truck driving uh, companies that you have in the states that have money that will pay truck drivers to go to truck driving school but we do have some bigger companies bison challenger those types of uh, truck driving companies that will that offer good mentor programs for new truck drivers and i really encourage any truck drivers uh, that uh, are coming out of truck driving school to go and work for one of these companies with a mentor program where they can work with somebody else who's going to show them what the job is, right? Because there's just so much to learn. Like log books, you know, if you're going into the States, there's border crossing documents, trip sheets, fuel reports, you know, filling up the truck. Where do you fill up the truck? How do you find a truck stop? Uh, where do you find fuel pumps? You know, how do you put fuel in the truck? It's just, there's so much stuff that they have to know. Freight, freight documents, you know, loading the truck and whatnot. Uh, there's, there's a lot of information. So I really encourage uh, new drivers that are coming out of truck driving school to, uh, you know, <laughs> to go with a, a company that has a mentor program so that they don't have to figure out all this stuff on their own the way that I did. Okay. Uh, Adrian, uh, I am, but I think for everyone to know, Ministry Second Career Center could help with this. I have an appointment with them tomorrow. Excellent. Okay. So government organization. Excellent. And Corey's put up the video on top five winter driving tips to prevent icy road <laughs> accidents. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah. And exactly what Angel said, don't hit the brakes. Uh, the brakes were what got me in trouble in the first place. But when you get into the skid, you want to be off the throttle, you want to be off the brake, and you just want to be working that steering wheel. Let me tell you, I was working the steering wheel. <laughs> I was working the steering wheel. And if you're just joining the live stream now, just back up the live stream there a little bit. You'll see me go into a spin in the dark at night on a two-lane road. <laughs> Okay, tech. Uh, I've been trucking for about two years now, and your detailed videos really helped me understanding the concepts of trucking. Thank you, sir. And you're most welcome, tech. Uh, tech, are you driving uh, in the states? Or are you driving in Canada? Which which lanes are you running? Are you just kind of running all over the place? Uh, Tim, I was trying to say that I was glad that you were driving slow. Had you been going faster, uh, things might have been worse. Uh, Tim, I, I can't say that I was driving slow. <laughs> I was not driving slow. I was probably going a little faster than I should have been. Uh, Tim, it's amazing how often luck is involved in avoiding catastrophe. On the other hand, I've investigated a lot of crashes where someone was minding their own business and got whacked. Yeah, that happens too, Tim. And uh, this, and just on that point, Tim, this is one of, one of the things about driving instructors that upsets me is is that there's some of these driving instructors that are about power over, right? It's like look look at how much how much stuff I know. It's not about empowerment. It's not about helping you become a better driver. And you know, one of my favorite ones was going to air brake course, 
and the truck's driving down the freeway and the truck on the other side comes across the median and drives into the side of the truck just minding its own business as you said and gets whacked and the driving instructor shows this clip and he's like oh what would you do in this situation it's like what would i do <laughs> it's like what can you do you're just driving down the interstate minding your own business i mean you th there's no there are some car crashes that are truly accidents there's some that just there's nothing you can do you can't hit the brakes you can't swerve you can't avoid you know and it they happen there are car accidents <laughs> there are truck accidents where it just happens but it drives me crazy when when instructors show these types of impossible crashes where there isn't anything that you can do you know you can look farther down the road you can be all these you can be doing everything right defensively and still get whacked is exactly what you said tim uh tyson uh this nice part about the fire department they pay for your dz yes and this is another thing as tyson just said that the fire department if you're working towards becoming a firefighter and you have to get your dz license uh for those of you who don't know that's a three axle truck uh, like a fire truck or a dump truck uh, so that's the D license and then the Z is the air brakes in Ontario. So you have to get your street truck with a, the air brake endorsement uh, and, the, and the fire department pays for that. And a lot of volunteer fire departments will pay for your license. They will pay for you to get your air brakes, maybe even do a defensive driving course. But there are a lot of companies out there. I mean, if you go to work for the city, for example, they need you to get your uh, DZ license. Uh, that'll happen too that they'll pay for that right so there are a lot of companies out there so there is funding available uh, as one other smart driver here I can't remember I think it was Adrian uh, said going to a government agency there's lots of employment agencies around we have one here in British Columbia called community futures there's, there's one in every state one in every province where they will help you to get a job they will be able to tell you where the government funding is they will tell you how to do the research uh, for most government funding, you have to go and do research. You have to go to two, maybe three truck driving schools. You have to come up with what the tuition is going to cost. You need to come up with some sort of budget of, you know, how long it's going to take you, how much, is, how much are your living expenses, your transportation expenses, entertainments, and those types of things. Uh, so you have to do all of that research, fill all of that out, and then submit that for government approval. You know, and most of the time you're going to get that funding if you can show that you're going to get retrained. Uh, Okay, Tim, all the best. And I did send you that email, Tim, so have a look at that as well. And uh, have a great week. Uh, so you have to submit all of that information. So make sure that you're doing that. Make sure that you're exhausting the, these other avenues of potential funding for truck driving school. Uh, Arun, uh, how to become a tr good truck driver because I live in Alberta and the winter is very bad here. Uh, still, I scared to drive car in the winter. Maybe I drive only summer if I get my truck license. Uh, Arun, that is definitely a possibility that you could only drive in the summer. But, uh, you know, maybe what you might want to do is just uh, hire a driving instructor to give you some lessons about driving in the winter time. Because, you know, most of the time in the winter, the, the roads are going to be fine. Uh, so that would be one of my suggestions for you. Uh, DC, doing well. You, my friend. Uh, Mike, I have my end test in June in Richmond, BC, and I'm pretty nervous. <laughs> you got lots of time to practice, Mike. Uh, six months, so do your uh, do your stuff there. Uh, Tyson, what comes after DZ? Uh, in Ontario, after DZ is AZ. So it's going to be your tractor trader license uh, is uh, what's going to happen there in Ontario. Wojek, uh, do you think that there's any chance to get any government funding? Although I've been employed for the last three years. And my income is pretty decent. Uh, there might be a possibility. I mean, all you can do, Wojak, is to apply for the government funding, see what the stipulations are, the criteria for getting that funding. But you don't know unless you actually apply for the funding. You have to apply for it before you can actually see whether you, you know, they're going to say no, they're going to say yes, those types of things. Uh, it was the same thing. Uh, 19, 1997. Okay, so. Uh, I was unemployed, and if you're unemployed, that's usually the best time for you to get funding from the government. Uh, 1997, I wanted to get my, so the, in Ontario, the driving instructor's license is two parts. The first part is the in-car teaching, so you can get your license, you can teach in the car. 
The second part is is the in classroom part because there was a whole thing with the GDL program, the graduated driver's license program, where you had to teach a, a classroom component. So the second part of getting your driving instructor's license was you had to go to Toronto to the Ontario Safety League and you had to do the course there. And because I was unemployed, I'd already done the first part of the driving instructor course. And so I was on unemployment insurance. I went to the unemployment office and I said to them, listen, I want to be retrained as a driving instructor. I've already got the first part of this course. I want to do the second part. Can I, can, will you do funding for this? And they said, yes, we'll pay for the tuition for the course and we'll continue to pay you unemployment benefits but you have to, you know, you have to pay for your own accommodations when you're in Toronto. So I just, you know, I lived in Toronto. I was, went to a youth hostel. I don't know, youth hostels are what, 25, 30 bucks a night. Figured out my food and those types of things. So that was what I, that was how I funded myself to go and get my driving instructor's license uh, and, you know, go to school to do that. And I had to, you know, pay to live in Toronto for three weeks, but I was still getting unemployment benefits. Uh, ready, I passed my class five in BC yesterday. Thanks for all your help and take care and congratulations on passing. That is really awesome. Uh, what did you do to go and celebrate your success in getting your license? Uh, okay, uh, I was told by the school representatives that they will provide the tuition receipt uh, form that is tax deductible. Did you hear about this option? Okay, yes. And so all tuition that you pay for whatever, any books that you buy, any expenses that you have related to going to school, all of that is tax deductible. Now, I don't know the specifics for the IRS, but I do know the specifics for the CRA. All of that is tax deductible here in Canada. Most of it's going to be tax deductible in the States. They're gonna have sim similar tax laws, but the tuition, the books, living expenses for going to school, all of that is going to be tax deductible. So make sure that you keep all of those receipts. Okay. Uh, Epic uh, Valley region, speaking of CDL schools for trucking and buses, do they teach you how to probably use logbooks here? Local community colleges offer these in summer, in the summertime. Yes, Epic. But again, it's going to be one of those kind of add ons, right? Depending on which truck driving school you go to, uh, you know, most truck driving schools is part of daily driving. When you get in the, the truck and you drive around in the vehicle, you're going to keep a logbook. So they're going to teach you how to do that. But there are specific courses that you can, uh, there is a specific course at the truck driving school where they will go over all the particulars with you for, you know, hours of service regulations and those types of things. And if you want to take a logbook course, I have a logbook course over at the Smart Drive Test website. You can take either the Canadian one or the American one. So if you want to do logbooks, you can go over there and it, it's only $25. You can do that course. And of course, if you have any questions about logbooks, you can ask me that too. But colleges, truck driving schools do. But again, you know, it's kind of like buying a car. You're going to get a basic car and then it's like, you know, do you want air conditioning? That's extra. You want a sunroof? That's extra. You want mag tires? That's extra. It's the same thing as going to a truck driving school. Okay, we're going to go to truck driving school. Here's the cost of the basic course. Oh, you want logbooks? That's another hundred bucks. You want load security. That's another 250 bucks. You want to do, uh, you want to do drop deck. That's another $500. You want to go to skid school. That's another thousand dollars. So again, there's all these things that you can add on to going to truck driving school. So know that and that, and again, that goes back to the log books. Uh, Jaden, uh, the chick filler in the United States is renovating their drive throughs to be double drive throughs like the ones at McDonald's. I haven't seen these double drive throughs I think I have seen some of them, but I'm really not aware of them. <laughs> uh, Robert, if you're on EI, you tell them you want to take a training course and your EI benefits will continue, but you have to pay tuition. Okay, is that the way that it works for EI? Because I haven't obviously been haven't been on it for some time. Uh, Mike, do you think a Ford F-150 is too big for a new driver? Uh, Mike, not so much. I think you'll do just fine in a Ford F-150. It might be a little big for taking a driving test. I might uh, counsel you to go to a driving school and use their car rather than doing using your 150. Terwali, uh, what state do you think is the hardest to get your driver's license? Uh, <laughs> I, 
I don't know. I, I don't think it's any different to get your driver's license anywhere because there's always pros and cons to wherever you are in terms of getting your driver's license. For example, Margaret's doing her driver's test there in Brooklyn. And, you know, there's a lot of congestion in Brooklyn. Uh, you know, <laughs> most of the businesses in Brooklyn work on the streets because there's they're so limited for room. So you have to kind of navigate that um, obstacle course when you're driving. But on the other hand, the driving test in New York is only eight to 10 minutes. So, you know, that's which, that's which, you know, so it's, it, it doesn't matter where you are. It, the, how tough the test is depends on the driving examiner. It doesn't, it doesn't really depend on the location. It's more on the driving examiner. Okay, so Corey's put up the two logbook courses there. If you want to check those out, you can definitely do that. And if you have any questions at all about the logbook courses, definitely uh, drop me an email. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Uh, Vanti, uh, Professor, I'm from Brazil and soon moving to Victoria, BC. Is that true that in Victoria, the CDL is harder to get? Uh, any recommendations regarding a driving school? Uh, you're very limited in... Uh, Driving schools in Victoria, there's only two of them there. So pick one or the other. Uh, I did work for one of them there. <laughs> so he's not my, my choice. I didn't leave on good terms, but you'll be able to get your license there just as well. So that's good. Uh, Margaret, is it's the random pedestrians that make it scary, not so much the traffic. <laughs> yeah, just think, Margaret, after you get your license, it'll be like dodgeball, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, fever best way to do pre-trip for a new driver just starting today thanks okay so fever you're going to do your pre-trip inspection every day but a couple of things i will tell you about doing the pre-trip inspection do the pre-trip inspection the same way every time and the driving instructor should be helping you with that and making sure you're doing it the same way every time top to bottom left to right and the truck has to be broken down into sections so the way that we used to do the pre-trip inspection open the hood passenger side of the engine top to bottom left to right and you break it down into sections about this big okay and then go to the next section and go to the next section so passenger side driver's side right leave the hood open no you don't leave the hood open you close the hood up get in the cab uh do your in cab inspection and then the air pressure is built up so when you do your uh, checks on your air brakes everything's going to work properly because you got full air pressure in the truck so you do your in cab checks and then you put the left signal on high beams on you get out of the truck you do the front of the truck go down the driver's side of the truck the back of the truck and when you get to the back of the truck you're going to tell ask the driving examiner can you stand here i'm going to check the brake lights he or she will stand there and you'll go up and check the brake lights you'll put your other signal on put your low beams on go up the passenger side of the truck uh you go back in the truck no you won't go back in the truck sorry then you go under the truck you do the inspection underneath check all your brakes go in put on the brakes uh remove your chocks put everything away get back in do your tug tests and then fill out your paperwork for your pre-trip inspection so that's basically the way you do it and uh but you just basically got to do it top to bottom left to right and then break the vehicle into segments into into sections okay so you do the front of the trailer top to bottom, left to right, all the way down, you know, do the side of the trailer, break the trailer into half, and that's how you remember that. But just re just remember, the first three days of truck driving school is, is, are the hardest three days because they just throw everything at you. But after that, it's just wash, rinse, repeat, okay? All right. Uh, Mike, I'm doing my end test in a Toyota Highlander. Excellent, that's gonna work well for you. Uh, Bobby, how hard is it to drive a cargo van? Okay, so how big is the cargo van? It's not it's not really that hard, Bobby. The biggest challenge you're going to have is just it's going to be a bit bigger. There's going to be blind areas around the vehicle, and you're going to have to use your mirrors more, especially when you back up, so know that. Alrighty, uh, I do have an interim DL from ICBC. Is that good to drive in the U.S. until I get my card? Uh, yes, it is ready. You can definitely drive in the U.S., but unfortunately with the covid closed down right now shut down you're gonna have a hard time getting into the states so by the time they open up and we're allowed into the united states you'll probably have your full license so you'll be fine at that point uh, <laughs> not at all Jaden. okay uh 
At work, my boss says he doesn't trust me driving a forklift since the propulsion is in the front and the steering is in the back, and he told me he doesn't trust me. <laughs> uh, Jaden, I might suggest you go get your forklift certificate, and then he has to trust you because then you, you're certified to get your uh, forklift uh, uh, <laughs> to drive your forklift. So go do the forklift course. I think it's only six or eight hours. Like it's a day on the weekend that you go and get your forklift certificate. So that's what I would suggest that you do, and that your boss will help you out then. Okay, uh, Fever, you're most welcome. Uh, if we have any other questions. Also, the other thing, uh, Fever, if you're having trouble at all, there's a quick course over at the Smart Drive Test website for the pre-trip inspections. It's a fast course. Uh, basically, I've got a list of all of the components uh, for the truck. Uh, what you need to do, what you need to check, how you check it, and exactly what you need to say uh, to indicate that the view that that component on the truck is working because you know the pre-trip inspection does get students and essentially keep in mind that the pre-trip inspection on any vehicle whether it's a small bus a, a school bus a, tra a transit bus a coach bus truck dump truck whatever it is it's a visual inspection that's all it is you're just looking and then there's certain tests that you conduct to know whether a component is working or not so for example the air brakes, if you're testing the compressor on any air brake equipped vehicle, which most of the most commercial vehicles in this day and age are all going to be fitted with air brakes, to test the compressor, you simply pump the air pressure down when you're in the cab to 50 pounds per square inch. And then at a high idle, six to 900 RPM on a diesel engine, which most of them are going to be diesel engines, it has to pump 50 to 90 pounds within three minutes. Yes, three minutes. Most of them are going to do it in half that time. Okay? And so essentially what you're saying is, is that the compressor has to build a set volume of air in a prescribed amount of time. That's it. And if it does that, then it passes the test. Okay? And that's that's all you need to do to do the build-up test. So you're checking to see whether the component is working. So you're conducting a test to see whether that component is working. That's all you're doing. And the rest of it is just visual. Uh, and you just point, lightly touch, and say... Secure, not damaged, not leaking. Because 75% uh, of the components on the truck either have air in them, the truck or bus, have either air or, or fluid in them. So that's why you say secure, not damaged, not leaking. Because it probably got fluid or air in it and you don't want it to be leaking. Okay. Uh, Jaden, but that's the thing my best friends get to drive. it, But I don't get to, but I don't think I have to... Yeah, no, Jaden, your driver's license does not cover you for forklifts. You need to go and take a forklift certification course. You need to get a certification to drive a forklift, okay? That's different. That's something else other than your driver's license. A driver's license and a forklift are not the same thing. Your driver's license doesn't cover you for a forklift. You have to take a specific forklift workplace safety certification course. That's what, that's what I'm telling you, okay? Uh, Margaret, the driving school car always has check engine light on. Will this affect my driver's test? Uh, Margaret, they've probably taken that car down a, <laughs> for numerous road tests, so I suspect that they're not going to say anything to you about it. Uh, I would question your driving examiner or your driving instructor about why the check engine light is on because if it's something minor, which sometimes happens with the check engine lights. Uh, some of the older videos here, you can see that the check engine light was on in the buggy for quite a long time uh, because it needed a new catalytic converter. Once they put the catalytic converter in it, uh, the check engine light hasn't come on anymore. So that's what it is. Okay. Uh, excellent. Excellent. Angel, uh, high value info. Thanks a lot. I'm sharing your links with some friends. Outstanding job. Thank you so much, Angel. And if <laughs> there's any questions you have, you know, leave a comment down in the comment section there or send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. More than happy to help you out. Uh, Rocky, uh, if people want to drive a truck, a bus, or a school bus, how old exactly do they have to be? Now, I think if you want it, to, it's going to vary depending on where you are, whether you're in the States or in Canada, and it's going to vary province to province. But for most licenses, it's 18 years old. I think for tractor trader license, it's going to be 19 years old. So you're just look in the your driver's manual and look at the front and it will tell you how old you have to be for the particular license that you want. So I can't say specifically because it's different for every jurisdiction, but just look in the, in the driver's manual. 
Norman, uh, every road examiner on shoulder check is different. How do we know which one is right? Uh, not all the examiners are different. Some are a little weird and misinformed, but 90 degrees. So shoulder check is 90 degrees. 90 degrees to the left, 90 degrees to the right, because we have 180 degrees of peripheral vision. Okay, so when we turn our head, we're now looking over here too. So we don't need to look like that, okay? All we're doing is checking for light and movement because our peripheral vision, 180 degrees in a healthy adult, is 180 degrees and it's attracted to light and movement. And you're just basically looking to make sure there's no movement or light in your blind areas around the vehicle. And then if there is, then you come in for a closer look and figure out what's there. A bicycle, a person on a scooter, a pedestrian or whatnot. If you're in Brooklyn with Margaret, then it's going to be pedestrians <laughs> bouncing around on the road randomly. So it's just 90 degrees. It's just the 90 degrees. Because if it's more than 90 degrees, it's too long with your main vision away from the front of the vehicle. And what happens is if you linger there, the vehicle is going to go where you're looking because the vehicle always goes where you're looking. So it's a quick 90 degrees turn to the head. All right, especially if you're getting on a slip lane, this is going to be dangerous, or not dangerous, but it's going to be a big learning curve for new drivers who are on a slip lane, you're behind another vehicle, because you have to be shoulder checking to find your gap that you're gonna get into, and you gotta make sure that this vehicle in front of you doesn't slam on the brakes, because that's kind of your danger area is there, is rear ending that vehicle in front of you. So quick, 90 degrees, 90 degrees left, 90 degrees right, right over there, your left, <laughs> 90 degrees left. You're right. There we go. Okay, uh, Jaden, anyway, thanks for your help, Rick. I'm going to have to go because I have to get ready for work tomorrow. All right, Jaden, all the best, my friend. Look into that certificate for the forklift there. That's what you need to do. And then your boss will trust you. He has to because you got the piece of paper. <laughs> uh, Fuad, uh, is it expensive to get a truck driving license? Uh, it depends where you are. It can be expensive to get a truck driving license depending on where you are. But go back in the presentation here tonight in the live stream look at the different types of funding that are available and then start doing your research to find that and again if you have any questions about going to truck driving school getting your truck driving license your cdl license send me an email rick at smartdrivetest.com or leave me a comment down in the comment section there and we'll do what we can to help you out okay all right so corey's put up the video on shoulder checking i know that you're going to get you know and I know it's frustrating for some of you because you're going to get different information from different driving instructors and, and that's unfortunate, right? And, and again, this is another point that I'll go back to for those of you who are thinking to go to CDL truck driving school and Corey will put the video up for you on five questions to ask a truck driving school because don't just go to the first truck driving school because it's around the corner and it's convenient. Do your research and one thing that is getting more and more scarce is one-on-one -on -one training with a driving instructor when you're going to truck driving school. You don't want to be passed around from school from driving instructor to driving instructor to a driving instructor. I I work for a driving school. I've worked for a couple of driving schools that do that. I disagree with it. It's it goes against my whole <laughs> my whole being as a, an instructor as a teacher because show me 50 driving instructors I will show you 50 ways to drive a truck, okay? And you get in the truck, you and you know they'll say to you, oh, it's it's good for you to get different experience with different driving instructors. That's bunk. That's total garbage. There's too much for you to learn that you have to get in your head to be able to pass the license test because this is what happens at the end of the truck driving school is you go and do your road test. And there's so much information that you have to know. There's so much learning that you have to get into your into your head, into your body, because remember, it's a physical thing too. It's a kinesthetic thing. There's memory that you have to learn how to shift that truck and drive that truck and get it around corners and those types of things. And if you got six or seven different driving instructors all beaking at you and telling you different things and trying different things, it's just gonna confuse you. So go to a driving school that works one-on-one -on -one with you and they can say or do whatever they want. But the bottom line is, is that if you go to a school where they pass you around to driving instructors, it's just convenient for them. It's not, it's not doing you any good. You wanna work with one driving instructor from beginning to end. So that's what I really, really strongly encourage you. And have a look at that video on five questions to ask uh, before you pick a driving school. Okay, 
Uh, Fuad, is the road test in general uh, New York City hard to pass? I have my learner's permit already. Uh, Fuad, uh, no, it's not hard to, you just have to do the work and be prepared. Make sure you got everything in place. Work with a driving instructor. Uh, get in touch with Margaret there. Uh, she's preparing and doing her driver's test there in Brooklyn. So she's got a pretty good idea what she's up against in terms of the driving test. Uh, it's not hard. You just need to do the work. You have to get the right information so that you're ready on driver's test day. Okay, Norman, what other information did they tell you? Because they must have told you something else other than why uh, why you failed the driver's test. And it's it's difficult for me to comment because examiners, I wasn't there. You know, I wasn't in the vehicle and the driving examiner will give you a limited amount of feedback. Uh, you know, but uh, one of the things I would suggest, Norman, is to have a look at the video on you failed your driver's test and what you need to do to, you know, do it again and pass. And the other part, Norman, about this is that the next time you go back for your driver's test, it's very unlikely that you're going to have the same examiner. You're going to have a different examiner. Uh, seldom when students fail driver's test do they put them with the same examiner again. That's, that's going to be unlikely. So you'll be with a different examiner and you'll get it, you know, you'll probably pass the next time. You, it's a very, uh, very high likelihood that you're going to pass. Uh, there you go so that's excellent advice from Margaret there which she says about you really have to get your parallel parking correct and keep the car centered the test is short yeah it's very short because it's only it's less than 10 minutes there in the state of New York uh, and in New York City and for the parallel parking that's basically all they're going to do is they're going to get you to parallel park and they're going to go around the corner <laughs> that's basically all you can do in 10 minutes so you got to hold it together for that long uh, uh, rookie auto driving school is one of the driving schools but it's in the Bronx so I don't know whether that's going to work for you uh, with in the Bronx that's the only driving school that I'm aware of uh, Sam isn't here tonight so otherwise I'd ask Sam for you he'd be able to tell you okay uh, so excellent Michael did you get that Audi yet <laughs> I'm working on it Michael Actually, I'm not really fond of the Audi. Actually, I'm I'm a Maserati guy. I'm really working towards a Maserati. That's going to be my my thing. Uh, so, <laughs> there we go. Uh, Fuad, uh, parking is okay. Excellent. Okay, so you're probably going to do all right. I might suggest that you, you know, book a practice driving test with a local driving school and uh, just get an assessment done, and they'll be able to give you some feedback about your skills and abilities. In preparation for the driver's test and then you and then you're good to go you just go so so just recapping on the truck driving school and funding there is money available there's veterans programs there's employment programs there's retraining programs uh, if you've been injured on the job you can get retraining uh, so all kinds of money I mean the other suggestion that I hadn't thought of before is GoFundMe page people will give you donate money for you to go to truck driving school and those types of things so know that there's money available and I know that it's incredibly expensive especially with these jurisdictions now that have the mandatory entry level training programs uh, you know they're not working they're not gonna work and that's my opinion that's my strong professional opinion uh, it's really only benefiting the schools it's it's not making better drivers and it's certainly not preparing them for the industry because the people who you know they set them in a classroom or they set them in the yard and well that's not how you learn how to drive a truck you have to be in a mentor program with an experienced driver that can show you the ropes and do this on the job because it's it's a you know there's a lot to know people are always you know new drivers that come into truck driving school are always surprised by how much information uh, they have to learn <laughs> and how many details there are and you know driving truck is not complicated it's like driving a car it's not complicated it's only 347,222 details often in sequential order <laughs> So not each one of the details in of, of itself is complicated, but you put them all together, then it gets complicated. So uh, going to truck driving school, do your research, find the money and go to truck driving school. And I can also reassure you that return on investment, you're going to make your money back within the first year. It's going to work out. I know it's a, it's a bit of grief and it's a lot of hard work for a very short period of time, but it's a great investment and investing in yourself is always well worthwhile and you're going to do excellent right and there's always jobs in truck driving look at the um 
uh, eight reasons why you should consider a career in truck driving over at the uh, Smart Drive Test website there, and uh, that'll give you some more information. But do that. Okay, um, when a school gives a lesson, can I tell them to mark my driving as a test? That way they know uh, where my driving is. You can absolutely do that. Just tell them you want to do a practice driving test because you're coming into your driving test and you want them to do that. And they will definitely give you all of that information and give you uh, information or feedback on your skills and abilities and preparation for the test. So yeah, so definitely do that. So if you passed your driver's test in the last couple of weeks, congratulations on passing your driver's test. That's awesome. And if you have a driving test coming up in the next couple of weeks, good luck on that. Drop us a note if you have any questions. Uh, leave us a comment down in the comment section. Everybody hit that thumbs up before you depart. And have a great week. And we'll talk to you soon. And remember, pick the best answer. Not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.